This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, and welcome in to the Primetime Podcast here on Most Valuable Podcast. I am joined with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. You're back from Florida, man. Yeah. You're back from Florida. How was it? It was was beautiful. Because we were here in Chicago. I mean, the weather was nice, but it wasn't as beautiful as it probably was in Florida. Yeah, it was great in Florida. First couple of days, it rained a little bit. Um, But the next four or five days, beautiful, sunny weather. Got out to golf, played by the pool. It was was a great time. I think the best thing I saw, because for those of you who do not know, because you don't have Brandon added on Snapchat, maybe some of you do, I don't know. However... From your Snapchat story, the one my favorite snap from your vacation was it was a hut that said water sports on it, and it said that you asked the guy, "Hey, is this where the water sports is?" And he goes, "No." Yeah, guy goes, "Uh, no." <laughs> Sorry for asking such a stupid question. As it like at first, I'm like, "Oh, okay." Guy thought, and then I looked down, I'm like, "Oh, it says water sports yeah. in the hut." Like I, that was my favorite Snapchat from your <laughs> vacation. Just so you know, but welcome back. We are. Finishing, I, I should say finishing, not continuing, finishing our previews. Yeah. We have one conference left, the Big 12 Conference. We're going to get it done these next two weeks. We're going to start with the bottom feeders, the bottom five teams. Next week, we will do the top five teams. And then, Brandon, guess what time it is? Football season. We get to make our predictions, and then we are right into the beginning of the college football season. And we are going to start this Big 12 preview off with the Kansas Jayhawks. And the big thing for Kansas, we haven't said this about any other team, I believe, so far these previews, but over the past two seasons, Brandon, how many wins have they had? How many wins have they had over the last two years? I mean, over the last two years, I think they've they've combined for, what is it, two or three? I, I mean, basically, they have not been very good. Not good at all. They have not been very good at all, and I can tell you exactly what it's been. Mm-hmm. Um it's been two. It's been two because they didn't two get one wins. win in, in 2015. Mm-hmm. And in 2016, they got two, one to open the season. And then uh, one against Texas, a, a kind of a shocker, against uh, your Texas Longhorns that was, uh, at that 24-21 was a, in that was a struggling. That was a struggling Longhorn team, though. That was Charlie Strong, struggling Longhorn team, not the same Longhorn team we saw against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. But coming into this season... The big question, and this is usually the position that we start off with, it looks like the Jayhawks have a choice at quarterback. Like many of these teams that we have talked about before have coming into 2017. And the choice for Dave Beatty and the Kansas Jayhawk coaching staff is they can go with a guy who coming in, he was a sophomore, started the final three games for Kansas, and that was Carter Stanley. Started the last three as a sophomore. In those last three, Iowa State, 171 yards, one touchdown, one INT. Against Texas, that overtime win, 220 yards, no touchdowns, one INT. Against Kansas State in a loss, 302 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. They can start him coming into junior season, or they can start the junior college transfer, Peyton Bender, who right now it looks like the main thing that he has on um, on Carter Stanley is that he's got a quicker release and a stronger arm. So I'm going to ask you, Brandon, if you are right now Dave Beatty, are you looking at it and go, you know what, Stanley's the guy to win this job because of what he showed you in the last three years? Or are you saying, hey, you know what, I want to see what the transfer has and that quick release and that strong arm to lead this off. You said last three years for Stanley. Did you mean the last three, <laughs> last games? three games? Last, last three, three games. games. I just want to put that out there because otherwise we'd have somebody saying, yeah. you dumb idiot. Last three games of yeah. last year he started. So he starts those last three games last mm-hmm. year, and he, he shows something. You know, He, he shows that he had uh, some poise and uh, some skills that if you, if you keep that same guy mm-hmm. – you know, coming back each time, each game, growing each game, learning more. You know, you're still going to make some mistakes, but you're able to develop a little bit more. I think that that's someone that you want to go with. And mm-hmm. that's, again, not to say that you don't want to go with uh, Bender here, but I I think you, you enjoyed what you saw in the last couple of games 
from your incumbent, I think that that's who maybe you go with to start the season. And, you know, you have your quarterback battles in camp and you, you go back and forth and the one guy comes out better over the other one. But if there isn't a clear cut after that, I think going with Carter Stanley is not a bad thing, especially after what he was able to finish with. I think a lot of times guys can take that and lead that into the next season. However, we've also seen it where a guy ends a season on a really, really strong note, then comes back and he's expected to do so well, there's a lot of hype and everything like that, then doesn't live up to it. Mm -hmm. But if it were me, if I'm BD standing here, uh, sitting here and and talking with you about this, I'm saying I think that I would go with Carter Stanley uh, just because of what he was able to finish with last year and for part of being part of that Texas game as well, where you got a victory in in overtime, so it showed that you had some fight in you, and that he was able to help lead it. And the more important thing about this competition that they have between these guys, you want to know the fun fact about um, both Stanley and Bender coming into this year? Throw a fun fact at me. They're roommates. How about that? Roommates in college, so it's kind of a competition between. Roommates, and I mean, this is I'm getting this quote from Kansas City. Um, dot com. They got a quote from BD that says, I love the competition. We've got two very talented guys there who are operating this offense at a high level. They do a lot of things very differently, but they both do move very well. And the big thing that I look at is okay, no matter who you got playing the quarterback position, because I kind of have a sense and a feel that. BD and the staff, they're happy with whoever because you get the guy who's coming in um, with Stanley, the incumbent starter, should know the system by now, should come in, know the language, whereas Bender coming in from a different school has to learn that language, but he's got the tools that they obviously like. That's why they went ahead and recruited him. I look at the receivers, though, and last year was a big year for Kansas. Well, big year... For Kansas, most teams would be like, wow, our receivers didn't have that great of a year. They had two guys get over the 600-yard mark, and no Jayhawk had done that in the previous six seasons. I know. That's really impressive. Um, I think that that's, that certainly shows that you're moving in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And with a team like Kansas, and, and I don't want to give any disrespect for, for you KU fans out there, but it, it's been a struggle. I mean, we know that it's been a struggle for Kansas. You, you don't have any wins two years ago in 2015, and in 2016 you only get two wins. But that means you're moving in a direction. You know, you're moving in the right direction and, and going up, and I think that that's a positive thing. And then when you see what you're able to do on the receiving end, I think that's good as well. Uh, going back to that uh, Kansas-Texas game last year, Stanley mm-hmm. didn't do anything special. I, yeah. I didn't want to make it seem like he did anything special, but he didn't do anything that terrible that, that mm-hmm. hurt him. Uh, threw for 220 yards. One interception, no touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And I think probably people would say, well, Shane Bouchelle lost the game because yeah. he threw three interceptions, had had too many p- picks. I, I mm-hmm. just want to make cl- clear that up because you always have people, oh, you made him seem like he did a great job. All that, whatever. But um, I, I think that for Kansas, th- seeing those types of strides in, in a guy who is really going to help you from the receiving core mm-hmm. is Steven Sims Jr. And it's really funny because we – we have talked Steven about uh, where, where, where we broadcast mm-hmm. as play-by-play and, and, and color. We have a Steven Sims as yep. well, not a junior. A jack-of-all-trades uh, Steven uh, Sims. Absolutely he is. But this guy as well has been a big help for Kansas and is going to be someone moving forward that's going to be a big help mm-hmm. for Kansas. And, and that's what they need. You know, they need guys to be able to step in and, you know, be a force and be a go-to guy and be someone who can who can light a spark for this offense so that they can score some points. I mean, you look back at the last couple of last couple of seasons, last season in particular, mm-hmm. and you just look at all the games. They just got blown out. There and were, I know that and I know that's defense, there but, were some, but there's though. but there's but there's some that you look at and you go I mean, they they have struggled so mightily to even be able to score points and be in a game. Mm-hmm. And that's where you really, really need your offense to come alive and help you out a little bit more. There were too many where they had single digit. And when I say too many, what I'm seeing on here is three. But that's too many. 
You score seven against Memphis, seven against Baylor, and three against Oklahoma. Now, I understand the last two are very, very good opponents. Mm -hmm. But still, that is not competitive. And I think that you you want to get to the point where you're at least, you know, able to put up some points, 20 points, something. Mm -hmm. Well, there are three games that I'm looking at. And funny thing, we're going to talk about all three, well, two of these three opponents today, this week. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait for the other one. I'm looking at TCU. I'm looking at Baylor, and I'm looking at um, Iowa State. More so Baylor and Iowa State, only because Baylor, yes, it was 49-7. to However, this is going to be a very different Baylor team this year than it was last year. Our Bryles is no longer there. Matt Rule is now the head coach. They have a huge, not just a system change, they have a culture change there in Baylor because of everything that went down with that team and that school and that everything. And then Iowa State, they're a team that was right next to Kansas in the standings, and it was a one of the closer games. It was only 31 to 24. If they could maybe flip the Iowa State game, maybe flip Baylor, the other one, TCU, they're a team that I'm not like they're the odd one out. Yes, it was a one point game last year. However, TCU's a team under Gary Patterson. They could just turn it on like that. Like you think they're gonna be bad one year and boom, they're good. And then you think, oh, TCU college football playoff, they're not so good. So really to me, they're the hot and cold one. Really, Baylor and Iowa State are the ones that I look at because Texas, like, I get you beat Texas last year, but that was a struggling Charlie Strong Texas team. By that part of the season, people were calling for Charlie Strong's head to get him out of town. Tom Herman's going to be in there. That's going to be a completely different team than you saw a year ago. You see Texas on the road this year at their place. Baylor's going to be at home, which will be a very good thing. But Iowa State, that's the big one, and it's on the road this year. If you could flip those two games, win one of your non-conferences, I'm looking at that Southeast Missouri State game as the one you can maybe win to start the season. The improvement for Kansas this year isn't going to be get to a bowl game or get to five. Maybe, like to me, the best-case scenario is if you win, I want to say four games. Four games, I'd be happy with this season because that means you went in, you won more conference games than you did a year ago. You're winning two conference games. That means you got to win at least two non conferences. That means I, Ohio and Central Michigan, you got to get one of those wins. You cannot go one and two in your non conference portion of the schedule. No, you, you certainly can't. And, and I think that there is going to come a time where there's hope mm-hmm. that starts to come for, for Kansas fans. And I think that that's definitely something that could happen this year. I, I, I think some of the things are simple. Like you, you can't turn the ball over. You mm-hmm. cannot turn the ball over as much as, as Kansas did. And then also to be able to look at the defense. And the defense was not good last year. But I think that Beattie's going to be able to rely on his uh, you know, front seven. And I think he's going to be able to rely on those guys uh, in, in a big, big way. Mm-hmm. That's going to be very, very important. And if he's able to get back Joe Deneen from a hamstring injury last mm-hmm. year. Now, now, this guy was looking to be a very prominent defender, very prominent linebacker. And if he has him back... That's going to be a huge boost to the defense, the energy, and mm-hmm. the lifeblood of the defense. And that's how Beatty has kind of referred to him before. So if he's back and he's at full strength, that's going to be a huge bonus, huge plus for them. And we both know that when you look at last year and mm-hmm. the points that, that Kansas gave up, there wasn't a chance. There wasn't really a chance. I mean, even when I mention that Kansas needed to score some more points, doing so does nothing for them to get a win. It just makes them look a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But if they're more competitive throughout the game and can limit some of these opponents, some of these better opponents, to instead of 55, how about 35? You know, it just it looks better. And then you start to have a chance of 
get some scores together, you could be in the game. And, and I'm not saying that that's going to happen overnight. Mm-hmm. 55 to 35 on a defense that really did struggle. I'm not saying that they're going to be there again this year. I, the hope is that they get better. And still, though, if you can cut down on that any bit, you know, 55 to 45, 40 points, it means you're doing something. You're heading in the right direction. And as, mm-hmm. as a Kansas fan, those are the types of things that you need to be looking at as, okay, we didn't get a win, but how did we improve from last year? Well, and here's the thing. It's not going to happen overnight with this Kansas team. And the thing that and I'm going to get into the main point in a second, but the thing about the defense even that I want to look at is most of the leadership you get on the front four, you get a guy like, um, Dorrance Armstrong Jr., he's going to return. He had 10 sacks season last year. You get a guy like Daniel Wise, who was a first-team All-Big Ten selection by Pro Football Focus. And then you also get Joe Joe Deneen Jr., who is your team captain from last year, and last year was kind of cut short after an injury. Can you get him for the entire year this year? The big question that is going to be raised by some people, and I want to say – there's going to be some people in the Kansas faith and the Kansas fanship that raise an eyebrow, but most of us outside of that Kansas blue are going to raise an eyebrow that's like, okay, really? After uh, two years and two wins in those two years, KUAD goes ahead and gives BD a contract extension, 2-22 and 22 in the first two seasons, and he gets a contract extension, which went from... 800,000 annually to 1.6 million in 2017 with an 100 an 100,000 dollar bump each season. And that's why to me four wins ha- like four wins at least. You have to show improvement. And I know KU fans are going to come out and say, "Well guys, you haven't touched on how BD in his first year had to deal with a scholarship crunch like numbers and he's building a roster with getting scholarships back and I know, like, that's one of the big things he had to deal with that season, and it's not easy to do that. However, there might be some expectations from the fan base, from outside eyes, now that your head coach is getting this extension after going 2-22. and Ricky, we're in year three Mm -hmm. of Beatty here, Mm -hmm. and this is the point where people will start to say, well, we're finally going to see his guys. Mm -hmm. We're going to finally see his guys that he recruited to be on his team. Well... We are going to be seeing those guys. That holds true now like it does at any other Mm -hmm. time when anyone else would say that. Mm -hmm. Year one, okay, I get it. Year two, all right. Year three, these are his guys. These are the guys that he wants to be there, and these are the guys that he wants to be able to see produce. Mm -hmm. So if they can go out there, Ricky, I think it's possible for Kansas to win those first three games of their season with the one road game being against Ohio. That's going to be the tough one. And that is going to be the tough one. That's going to be the tough one. That would be... What I think is the kind of the game to watch for Kansas and the key game, I'll say the key game on this schedule. And people mm-hmm. are probably going to be going, "You're kidding me!" All these other teams on the schedule, and you're going to pick out at Ohio. Well, yes, you're, because you're not going to compete with honest, Ohio or with you're, Oklahoma. You're, you're, no, you're not. Gonna, you're not going to beat Oklahoma. I mean, unless <laughs> or you, Oklahoma State, you're, you're not. You're, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it uh, this year. I mean, if by some miracle, because they do happen. Uh, like if Baker Mayfield gets injured, you know, if he gets if he gets injured, of course, but but if by some chance that happened, okay, great, but mm-hmm. no one's expecting that. But if if you can take out and pinpoint a game like in Ohio, where if you win those first two against Central Michigan and Southeastern Missouri State, if you win those two to start and you're two mm-hmm. and zero, and then you beat. Ohio on the road at Ohio, who gave Tennessee a good run last year in their mm-hmm. game. Tennessee, I, I think that that is when you go, all right, we're moving in the right direction. We're looking better. We're feeling better. I've got hope as a fan. This team is coming along. The guys that Beatty went out and got, they're making a difference. They're making an impact. He's making an impact. Mm-hmm. That's big. Then you go on and you lose to the next four. It doesn't help. But <laughs> but but what I'm saying, and they probably won because Ohio I, Iowa State is in there. Mm-hmm. And you could beat Iowa State. They're not a great team. I think Iowa State and maybe Baylor. I think Baylor, you can get them with kind of the whole culture change that is going on there. Plus, a big thing is they don't have Jared Stidham anymore. He is not on that team. This is a Baylor team that might be primed for the picking. However, we'll get into Baylor later. Will they be competing or will they be 
on the bottom half. But those are the two conference games I look at is Iowa State and Baylor being the ones. Those are the ones I target. Those are the ones that are going to be my wins. And kind of just in oversense to what we're talking about here, like you said, you're not going to go uh, go up and beat Oklahoma. How expectation-wise, how four wins might sound like a slap in the face expectation-wise, this is a team by Westgate uh, Las Vegas Superbooks. Do you want to guess the their odds, Kansas's odds, to win the Big 12 championship this year? Or do you just, just want me to tell you? It's insane. Just tell me. 500 to 1. So put your money on Kansas, and if they win the big, big ten or Big Twelve championship, you're going to be rolling in the dough. See, I was just off by a little bit. I was going to say five thousand to one. Yeah, close, close. <laughs> one, one thing I, I want to mention really quick because mm-hmm. because I'm seeing it here. Yeah. Before we before we wrap up on, mm-hmm. on on Kansas, is that there's a 2017 Kansas preview, and it is titled "Stop Sucking at Football." Now, if if that doesn't if I don't see that as a player as mm-hmm. a coach. And that motivate you and even that more. Light a fire under your rear end, and that doesn't light a fire under you. Nothing will. No. And this is where we're going to turn it on to you guys. Let us know, Kansas Rock Chalk Jayhawk. I I I think I said the Rock Chalk Rock, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's late here at the MVP studio, so <laughs> my English might not be as good as it usually is. But let us know what you guys think down below with your team. What are your expectations? Because really, I want to know from the fan base. What do you guys think? What's a good win-loss number for you guys coming out of last season and your first win season of uh, BD's uh, regime there. So let us know down below in the comment section. 